In the last video, we saw an example where the rescale rule addresses the thresholding problem of gradient times input. But let's now look at an example where the rescale rule, and in fact all other backpropagation methods, give a misleading result. Here is the min slash and network from the part 2 video, computing the function min of i1, i2. Recall that we found gradient-based methods, including integrated gradients, put importance either exclusively on i1 or exclusively on i2. Let's look at what the rescaled rule does. Consider the specific values of i1 is equal to 2 and i2 is equal to 1. Here, we get h1 is equal to 2 minus 1, which is equal to 1, and h2 is a max of 0 and 1, which is 1, and y is i1 minus h2, which comes down to 2 minus 1, which is 1. What happens if we use the rescale rule to assign contributions? Assume we use a reference of 0 for both i1 and i2. This gives delta i1 is equal to 2 and delta i2 is equal to 1. We then, through forward propagation, get delta h is equal to 1, uh, delta h1 is equal to 1, and delta h2 is equal to 1, and finally, delta y is equal to 1. What happens when we try to assign contributions to the delta y? The 1 of delta y is composed of a 2 coming directly from delta i1 and a negative 1 coming directly from delta h2. The full contribution of delta h2 gets inherited by delta h1, and delta h1 gets split up into a 2 coming from delta i1 and a negative 1 coming from delta i2. Adding it all together, we get a net contribution of 0 from delta i1 and 1 from delta i2. So what went wrong? We posit that the issue lies here. By assigning contributions to delta i1 and delta i2 proportionally to their input values, we miss the fact that if delta i1 were 0, the contribution of delta i2 would also be 0. We fix this by considering the individual impact of delta i1 or negative delta i2 on h in the absence of the other term. This is the basis for the reveal-cancel rule. Let's dive into the specifics of the reveal-cancel rule. As a reminder, this rule applies to single input transformations of the form y is equal to f of x. To recap, the rescale rule sets delta y plus and delta y minus proportional to delta x plus and delta x minus with a constant of proportionality equal to delta y divided by delta x. Here, delta x plus is the lump sum of incoming positive terms and delta x minus is the lump sum of incoming negative terms. In the reveal cancel rule, rather than setting delta y plus proportionally, we are going to set it to the average of two terms. The first term is the average impact of delta x plus on the output after no other terms have been added. x0 is the reference value of x, so we just look at the impact of delta x plus when it's included on top of x0. And the second term is the impact of delta x plus after the negative terms have been added. So we look at the impact of delta x plus when it's included on top of both the reference and delta x minus. And analogously for delta y minus. It is the average impact of delta x minus after no terms have been added and after the positive terms have been added. From this, we can simp simply calculate the multiplier of delta x plus to delta y plus as the ratio of delta y plus to delta x plus and analogously for the multiplier of delta x minus to delta y minus. Now, because delta x plus and delta x minus are lump sums of all the, the, all the positive and negative terms respectively, you may be wondering how the importance that is assigned to delta x plus and delta x minus is then distributed to its inputs, and the answer is through the linear rule, because delta x plus and delta x minus are linear functions of their input. Prior to developing the reveal cancel rule, we had published a preprint of DeepLift describing the linear and rescale rules. Based on this preprint, Lundberg and Lee pointed out that there was a connection between DeepLift and the Shapley values. Briefly, the Shapley values are 
the average marginal impact of including a term over all possible orderings of terms. If you think of including a term as setting it to its actual value instead of its reference value, then deeplift can be thought of as computing a quick approximation to the Shapley values, which was one of the results pointed out by Lundberg and Lee. It turns out that the reveal cancel rule, which we had actually developed prior to seeing the result in Lundberg and Lee's work, can be regarded as a better approximation to the Shapley values because it is actually computing the average impact, average marginal impact of delta x plus and delta x minus on y over both possible orderings of delta x plus and delta x minus. How does the reveal cancel rule address the problem of the min operation from before? As before, we have delta i1 and delta i2, but now instead of just having one delta h1, we have a positive delta h1 consisting of the plus two contribution from i1, and a negative delta h1 consisting of the negative one contribution from i2. To compute delta h2 plus and delta h2 minus, we use the reveal cancel rule. Positive 1.5 is the average impact of plus 2 both before and after the negative 1 contribution has been added, and negative 0.5 is the average impact of negative 1 both before and after the plus 2 has been added. How does this change our backpropagation? Well, we again start with delta y is equal to 1 consisting of a positive 2 coming directly from delta i1 and a negative 1 con coming from delta h2. Now here's where it gets interesting. This negative 1 from delta h2 gets divided into a positive 1.5 contribution from delta h2 plus and a negative 0.5 contribution from delta h2 minus. These contributions are inherited by delta h1 plus and delta h1 minus and are then passed on to their inputs via the linear rule. So ultimately, the total contributions are positive 0.5 from i1 and positive 0.5 from i2. Not a bad result if your underlying relation is the AND operation.